Former New York Islanders center Pierre Turgeon finally gets the call to the hall, and the Islanders' preseason schedule is released. We've got all that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe either on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And we are now also available on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We have got lots to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question for us, a comment about something we've discussed on an earlier episode, or maybe a topic you'd like us to cover in a future show. Feel free to send us an email, the email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on All things Islanders throughout this offseason, hirings, firings, trade rumors, free agency, the draft, you name it, we'll have it for you here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. So the big news coming out on Wednesday is that former New York Islanders center Pierre Turgeon gets the call from the Hockey Hall of Fame. He will be part of the class of 2023. And to me, this is a long overdue honor for Pierre Turgeon. And if you're old enough to remember Pierre Turgeon playing for the New York Islanders, you know darn well why he deserves this honor. He played 255 games over parts of four seasons for the Islanders and had 147 goals, three 140 points. In other words, he had almost, you know, more than 100, almost 100 more points than games played in an Islanders uniform, including what was, without a doubt, one of the more incredible seasons in Islanders history in 1992-93 played 83 out of 84 games they had that brief little period, Uh, played in 83 games for the Islanders, scored 58 goals, 74 assists, and yes, that's 132 points for Turgeon. 10 of his 58 goals were game winners that year which is an incredible stat, and he had 24 power play goals. Now, just to give you an idea, that's Turgeon alone in that one season had more than half the number of power play goals that the entire Islanders team had this past year, just to give you an idea of how dangerous he was. And he also had 30, count them, 30 power play assists. So 54 of his 132 points coming with the man advantage, even scored a shorty uh, or assisted on a shorty, excuse me, that year and had 301 shots on goal. His shooting percentage, an incredible 19.3, won the Lady Bing Award that year also for sportsmanship. And just, you know, Turgeon was just dangerous with the puck. He was somebody who really knew, you know, anytime he touched the puck, 
fans were anticipating what was going to happen next. Now, he came over in a big trade early in the 91-92 uh, season, along with Benoit Hogue, Uwe Krupp, and Dave McElwain. That was the trade that sent Pat LaFontaine to the Buffalo Sabres. And then he was traded away from the Islanders, along with Vladimir Malikov, in another trade after the 94-95 season, which saw uh, Kirk Muller, Matthew Schneider, and Craig Darby be dealt to the New York Islanders, that deal taking part in the trade deadline. But maybe the most memorable uh, thing that happened with Pierre Turgeon is what he did in that 1993 uh, playoff run by the New York Islanders and what happened to him during that playoff run because Turgeon, again, he was the engine that made the Islanders go. And he had six goals and 13 points in 11 playoff games that year. But the infamous occurrence happening in the first round with the Islanders win the series in six games, but it was Dale Hunter with one of the dirtiest, most despicable plays that I have seen on the ice. And I remember hockey in the 70s when the Broad Street bullies were at their bulliest. Uh, but it was maybe two or three seconds after the goal was scored and Turgeon was celebrating and Dale Hunter just attacked him from behind. Turgeon suffers a separated shoulder Misses the series against the Pittsburgh Penguins, which the Islanders won. They beat the defending Stanley Cup champions. Hunter suspended for 21 games, which at the time was an NHL record for an on-ice incident. He did manage to return for the Islanders' semifinal series against the Montreal Canadiens, but uh, because of the injury, wasn't at 100%. And the Islanders fell in five games, although two of those games did go into overtime and then Canadiens went on to win the Stanley Cup. But for Pierre Turgeon, you know, here's the guy who played with Buffalo, with the Islanders, the Canadiens, the Blues, the Stars, and the Avalanche. And I, I just have to say, you know, Pierre Turgeon, just one of those players that belonged in the Hockey Hall of Fame and now finally gets in. You look at the career numbers, 1,294 games, 515 goals, 812 assists, 1,327 points. More than a point a game. And the amazing thing is that his career continued into the dead puck era of the late 90s and into the early 2000s, and yet even when he was older and the league's, you know, scoring went down, he was a point-a-game player uh, as late as 2001, and even at the age of 36 with Colorado in 2005-2006, he had 46 points in 62 games, not bad for a guy who really relied on his speed and his skill and his dynamism. But you know what? I'd say it this way, too. The New York Islanders right now could really use a guy with the skill of Pierre Turgeon. Now, he's a center. They need a wing. But boy, oh boy, someone with that skill set and that speed would be most welcome in the Islanders lineup. So congratulations to former Islanders center Pierre Turgeon. And, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, he is now the eighth player in Islanders history to, to get Hockey Hall of Fame honors. The others, Dennis Potman, Mike Bossy, Batlin Billy Smith, Brian Trottier, the late, great Clark Gillies, Pat LaFontaine, and Roberto Luongo, who was only very briefly an Islander. You also have Al Arbor, Bill Torrey, and this former scout, Jimmy Devolano all deservedly in the Hall of Fame in the Builders category. But Pierre Turgeon now the eighth former Islanders player
to earn that honor. We have got a lot more to discuss on today's episode. We will discuss the Islanders' preseason schedule, which has now been released, so we can start counting down the days until the next Islanders game. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. We have killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, so you could stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, and you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Just download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NHL. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So the New York Islanders preseason schedule has been released. We now know that the New York Islanders will be playing six preseason games And we will see the Isles return to the ice on September 26th of this year. So we are now less than three months away. Or, okay, five days. Five days and three months away from seeing the Islanders back on the ice. They will have six preseason games, three on the road. Three at the UBS Arena. So if you're looking for tickets, here is the rundown. First preseason game, September 26th. This one against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. One day later, uh, a home game, September 27th at the UBS Arena. The Philadelphia Flyers are the visitors in that one. They get a day off, and then on the 29th, a rematch with the Rangers at the UBS Arena. So home games, September 27th, September 29th so far. Then you got a road game, October 2nd. This one at the Prudential Center in Newark against the New Jersey Devils. A couple of days off after that, and we go to October 5th. The longest road trip of the preseason for the New York Islanders. This one takes them to Philadelphia, where they'll face the Flyers at the Wells Fargo Center. And then one day later, October 6th, they will close out the preseason with a home game at the UBS Arena against the New Jersey Devils. So we still do not know the times of these games. But here's the beauty. And look, preseason hockey, it's not so much how much you win or lose. You can go 0-6 in the preseason. The beautiful thing about preseason hockey is seeing your players of your favorite team back on the ice. But it's really more important for the younger players and the prospects. Your Samuel Bolduks, your... uh, Arno Durandos, your, your, you know, your Ruslan Iskakov, assuming that he's up and competing for a job, your Matt Maggios, all of these kind of players, your William Dufours, guys who are prospects, all of a sudden, yeah, it's, it's not quite the same speed and intensity of an NHL regular season game, but at the same time, It's a higher level than AHL hockey because, look, you put 18 players out there on the ice, okay? Usually, it's about a a 50-50 split, so you'll have eight or nine 
NHL regulars who are just out there to kind of get back into shape and get back up to game speed. And then you'll have eight or nine, ten AHL slash, you know, East Coast or college players or, or prospects who are there, junior players or guys who are going to most likely go back to their junior team. They're out there on the ice competing against teams that are made up of NHL and AHL players. So, you know, for a guy like William Dufour or Ruslan Iskakov, you don't just need to prove that you can score and make the moves you want to make against AHL opponents, although obviously, you know, that's what you need to do if that's where you're assigned to get your chance. But to actually go out there and face NHL caliber players or a roster with a lot of NHL caliber players, that's a big proving ground. So again, it's not about the wins or losses. And the other thing is this, it is a great opportunity for fans who want to attend games. Preseason games typically do not sell out. You can very often get tickets at a discount. We're not talking about long road trips, even if you wanted to go to Madison Square Garden or to Newark or to Philly, make a weekend of it, go see the Islanders play in a preseason game. And the fact that you're facing a lot of your bigger rivals, you know, three division opponents, local opponents, adds a little extra zest to it. And look, if you're a hockey fan that remembers earlier ages, some of those preseason games, I remember some preseason games between the uh, Islanders and the Rangers, Islanders and the Flyers, there'd be some awful brawls out there. Uh, I even discussed, I discussed, I believe, if I recall correctly, two preseason games in my book, Ice Wars, uh, one of them being the very first time the Islanders met the Rangers and the other one being the first time they met, uh, you know, after a a particularly, uh, you know, violent episode from the season before, And, you know, again, it's always great to see preseason hockey just because it's hockey again. And now we know what to expect uh, as far as the schedule goes. How soon will the Islanders be back on the ice and and when we'll see it? I am looking forward to it, and it's great to see that that schedule has officially been released. So preseason hockey, uh, like I said, three months and an odd number of days away, and I'm looking forward to seeing the Islanders back on the ice. And obviously, you'll also be able to see some of the draft picks the Islanders will add uh, next week, and you'll be able to see, again, some of those prospects, players who are going to be in juniors this year, but maybe a couple of years away, and some of the higher rated prospects in the Islanders organization. So lots to look forward to. And now we know the preseason schedule. So happy to see that that was released and we go on from there. When we come back, we will discuss what this team still needs to do this offseason. There are more things for sure that the Islanders need to take care of. And with the draft now a week away, we're going to talk about that. And uh, we'll also have our Islanders birthday of the day, a pretty darn good goalie who was briefly an Islander. That and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are athletic shorts that make you look good and feel great. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg, and they give you a truly sculpted look, and they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restrictive cotton. Bird Dogs fish fixed this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches, so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice the movement, and Bird Dog uses anti-stink sweat uh, wicking fabric and it keeps you cool and dry all day long. You can go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and 
when you place an order, you'll get a free Yeti style tumbler. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. Believe me, you won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. So here we are uh, every day, as you know, we've gone through the entire Islanders roster. If somebody played a game for the Islanders this year and is still in the organization, we discuss them on this show. And you can go back and look at some of the shows from, you know, maybe the first couple of days of May on. We've been going through this roster. We broke down the season that was. And what the future role of these players, if any, is likely to be. So definitely check that out. But here's the thing. You know, what still needs to be done this offseason, just as an overview. And, you know, every day or no, we've talked about this team needs to get younger, faster, and more skilled. And certainly they haven't gotten younger, they haven't gotten faster, and they haven't gotten more skilled yet. But there are other things, you know, that's a general philosophy, but look, priority number one, sign Ilya Sorokin to that extension. Sorokin remains the anchor of this team. I still believe that without the goaltending that the Islanders got from Sorokin and Varlamov when he was in the lineup, this team doesn't even come close to a wild card spot, not even close to a playoff spot. So Locking up Sorokin, vital for this team. Still need to deal with Josh Bailey. What's going to be the method of moving on from Bales? Do they buy him out? Do they trade him? How are they going to get it done? So that remains to be seen, but that's certainly on the checklist. And then is Zach Parise coming back or is he retiring? He probably plays for the minimum. What happens to Semyon Varlamov? We've talked every day or no that Varlamov has expressed an interest in coming back. And he'll probably take a significant pay cut from last year to do it. My idea is between two and two and a half million a year for two years. But let's see what Lula Morello works out with uh, Semyon Varlamov. And if you don't work out a deal with Varley, you got to bring in another backup goalie because the Islanders really don't have one in their system as of right now. You also want to get, see whether you sign Pierre Engvall, Scott Mayfield. What happens with them? Engvall would add speed. This team needs it. Mayfield, that valuable right-handed defenseman with experience who's solid in his own zone, but can the Islanders afford him? That's a question that we're going to find out. And then adding that puck moving defenseman, something that Lou Lamorello has talked about and is yet to accomplish. It's been more than a year. Let's hope that some kind of trade is made to add either that puck moving defenseman that Lou and we have been talking about for so long and ideally a skilled scoring winger who can give the team that boost offensively that they need without a major sacrifice of defense. So in a nutshell, that's the overview. The the cap really hinders the Islanders though. And this team is going to need to make a trade to free up cap space. If they're going to be able to accomplish even just re-signing their own guys Uh, If you want to re-sign all four of the unrestricted free agents, Varlamov, Engvall, Parise, uh, if you want to do, and Mayfield, if you want to do that, you're going to have to do more than just deal Bailey away. You're going to have to make some trades. And hopefully Lou does that because the status quo is not going to be enough to get this team to the next level. And other teams are still on the upswing in this conference, and we need to see some improvement from the Isles roster-wise to take it to the next level. Let's hope that happens. And remember, we'll be here all off-season for that to give you the latest. All right, time for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And we're a day early 
on this one. But Friday will be the 52nd birthday of former Islanders goalie Felix Potvin. Yeah, the the other other Potvin in Islanders history. 6-1, a buck 91. A uh, second round pick by the Maple Leafs back in 1990. Joined them. Made his NHL debut during the 91-92 season. Stayed with Toronto until early in the 98-99 season when he joined the Islanders in a trade. Stayed with the Islanders from 98-99, of a good part of 99-2000, and then was traded to the Vancouver Canucks. Later played for the Kings and briefly the Bruins before hanging up his skates after the 2003 2004 season and we go back and look at one of Felix Potvin's better games with the Islanders. Islanders were not a particularly good team at this point, but April 12th, 1999 at the Continental Airlines Arena, Islanders facing the New Jersey Devils. Devils 21 games over 500 coming into this game. Islanders 24 games or 23 games below it at that point. And it was the Islanders scoring a 4-2 victory over the New Jersey Devils. What were the shots on goal in this game? New Jersey had 57 shots on goal. The Islanders had 23. And yet the Islanders win it 4-2 because Felix Potvin made 55 saves when facing 57 shots in a 60-minute regulation game it was just an insane performance and the islanders get the win on the heroics of felix potvin so potvin always better known for his time in toronto but was a new york islander he is our islanders birthday of the day thanks for making locked on islanders your first listen every day every day is tomorrow on the show we will start looking ahead to the draft, which is now less than one week away. We'll, we'll start talking about some of the players the Islanders could draft and giving you a little bit more of a scouting report on them. And we'll discuss some of the players the Islanders met with at the Combine as well. So we'll talk about that and a lot more on the show. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks for listening. And, of course, let's go Islanders.